I'm standing here this morning in New York City at Ground Zero watching the normal JFK flight patterns. Who can forget 9-11? It's burned into the consciousness of the world, either in the sorrow and shock of those victimized or the dark glee of those anticipating the downfall of the West. Those who imagined that the West could be brought to its knees by an attack on New York, the mighty symbol of American freedom, fail to understand the spirit of freedom. America was unified by the shaking. America was emboldened by that blow. America focused on the value of that freedom and was not morally undermined. Buildings fell and beautiful innocent people died, but a giant arose. Remember after Pearl Harbor, Japan knew they had awakened a sleeping giant. Now too, America's spirit is shining true. The challenge America must now rise to is a growing evil more dangerous than Japan or Nazi Germany. The potential for destruction is greater than those former despots' grandest dreams. That evil is driven not by racial supremacy like the Nazis, but by zealous religious triumphalism more virulent than any yet known in history. That religious triumphalism is driven by a concept stolen from Judaism and Christianity, the powerful concept of a messiah. Islam's coming messiah is known as the Mahdi. The many times Iran's president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, has addressed American audiences, whether at the United Nations or Columbia University, he has invoked Allah and beseeched him to send the Mahdi, also known as the Twelfth Imam, or the Hidden One. This third visit of Ahmadinejad to the United Nations awakened that spirit of American freedom into an iron fist of demonstration. Tens of thousands gathered at Dag Hammarskjöld Plaza near the United Nations in solidarity against this tyrant spewing incitement to genocide. This tyrannical Iranian leader is the A number one most vocal proponent of the coming of this Islamic Messiah, the Mahdi. The outcry in New York, both at the United Nations rally and at the Columbia University venue, where he was introduced by President Bollinger as a petty dictator, visually defeated the Iranian ruler. The power of the free American spirit spoke loudly. Director of Christians United for Israel, he has voiced his commitment to Israel's safety and security in Jewish and Christian forums across the country. Please welcome me, and join me in welcoming Pastor Stursky to the podium. Thank you for coming. Amen. Though we weren't present during the Crusades or the Inquisition, it's very doubtful that we would have fought against the Christian curse of those eras. During the time of Martin Luther, in all probability, we would have followed in lockstep behind his anti-Semitic theology. We can't change the past, but we can make amends today for what was done then. And although we almost certainly would have joined mute voices with the silent deadly church choir during the horrors of the Holocaust. Today we resolve to stand up and speak out in opposition to the anti-Semitic war being waged against the Jewish people. This is our agenda. We want to stand with you. There is no restitution we can bring to make up for our sins of the past. We ask for God's and for your forgiveness. And we promise you this, never again will the Jewish people or the nation of Israel walk alone. Never again will you say, there is no one for us. We believe, we really do believe, and are teaching our children and grandchildren that according to the Torah, the Psalms, the Prophets, and the New Testament, that the Jews are the beloved of God, the firstborn of His brethren, the apple of His eye. And we do believe, as written in Genesis and recorded throughout history, those who bless you are blessed, and those who curse you are cursed. As Christians, we believe the blessings that have poured so mightily upon this nation are contingent upon our continuing to bless the nation of Israel. As Christians, we're sternly warned in the New Testament not to be arrogant concerning the Jews. You are the chosen of God, His first love. Just two months ago, Christians United for Israel held its second annual Israel-Washington Summit, a coalition of 4,500 members, we came to D.C. to support Israel, present our views to the nation's leaders. We had representatives of every state in the nation. We had hundreds of appointments made with our senators and Congress. 
We now have a rapid response team of thousands. And just last week, in one day, 4,000 emails went to the White House. I finish with this. The President of Iran is blatantly supporting the Iraqi Shia militants and continues making shipments of IEDs into Iraq. To the members of the United Nations, we entreat you, confront the Iranian economic and political establishment with the immediate and unwavering force of every sanction available. Finally, the offering of the wicked is exceedingly disgusting and abhorrent to the Lord. It's written in the Torah. Ahmadinejad, take heed when you mock the sacred ground of this city where the Twin Towers once stood. The stench of your hypocritical wreath offering is an abomination to the Almighty and to us. Ahmadinejad, may your name be blotted out. Yamak Shamo! Yamak Shamo! Yamak Shamo! This girl's t-shirt quotes Edmund Burke, an English philosopher from the 1800s. It says, All that's necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing.